G'day guys, welcome back. Uh, probably a bit down the dumps in the last video, but um, back in the hangar, back at it. We've got a nice Proctor aircraft outside. I'll go and introduce you to Paul. Um, I'm sure he'll give us a bit of a chat about his aircraft. And the vote is in, we're going to do cedar on the floor. A lot of people mentioned you know, having the floor nice and bright. It's not like I'm going to be making sandwiches down there. But um, anyway, I'll brighten it up and we'll get on with the build of the Sopwith Camel. Thanks for watching. All right, we've got this beautiful aeroplane outside and the owner's in here, Paul. What's the aeroplane, Paul? It's a Professor Proctor Mark 1. Fantastic. Built in 1940 in the UK, Luton, by Percival Aeroplanes. It's and been in Australia since 1958 and uh, we've had it flying for about three years, but we haven't done a lot of flying in it because of the Covid nonsense. And uh, here we are getting it back to go off, hopefully on a local adventure. And the engine? Gypsy Queen 2, 210 horsepower, and uh, hopefully she'll start. Fantastic, I'll let you get on with it, thank you. All right, next job, made up an L angle, and we'll curve this to fit onto this bit of plywood here to give it some shape at the front. All right, so the floor's gone in. Put that in while I was charging the GoPro up. Floor's in, I ran a bead of silicon around, or Sikaflex, whatever I had in the cupboard, um, just to stop with vibration and rubbing, whatever. Six tabs are all collected. Got my trays in, everything's sort of in and just loose at the moment. About to torque up, because it's a fly control, I'll torque up these bolts, 25 inch pounds. Um, yeah, get all this torque down. Now, one issue, not, in, not another issue, but a uh, bridge to cross. My torque rod, torque rod or torque tube now is up on um, quarter ply at the front or seven mil ply, but the back mounting point I sort of omitted because you've got this weird shape and it mounts in that hole down the back. So we're going to be 7mm difference on the torque tube. It's not going to sit flat where it was. Not a real issue, but I think what I'll do, well, the neighbour just walked past. He suggested like a triangle. I was going to do a tri isosceles triangle. He suggested like a rooftop. I might do a triangle and just butt that on there just to give some support not only that i think it will aid if i just bolt the torque tube to this i'm just relying on that one one weld where the whole control column can bust out if you like not completely but it'll get pretty sloppy pretty quick so if i board this up and bring these other two into play you've sort of got to rip out all three stumps bolt him all right so rudder pedals and trays are in Believe it or not, guys, that is cedar. I went with cedar, but I read the instructions and it's a, it's a stained varnish. So I brushed it on, it went a bit darker than what I thought, but like I say to a few guys, I'm not making sandwiches down in there, so um, I like it and that's all that matters, I guess. So I'm glad I didn't go with the mahogany though, it would have been even darker. Right, cardboard template time, cut out the plywood and that is just going to butt join up there. Obviously, I'll stain it up. Um, basically, so that I can grab this bolt there, and the torque tube's all on the same, the same run. Um, I could have moved the torque tube further forward, but anyway, hindsight's a powerful thing. Now, to hold this down, I might just do like a, a tag on the bottom it can sort of engage underneath. It'll have the main bolt. One there, one, one here and one there or something. 
although my OCD will kick in, they need to be the same distance. So 50 mil and 50 mil. I'll get that where it needs to be, somewhere there. Uh, I won't worry about filling the gap or anything. The grain's going the same direction once I stain it up. Only a few thousand people will know about it. Um, there, so three in the middle, and out here, maybe just a couple of just a couple of cheetah self tappers in the bottom. I reckon I might do that as long as I don't penetrate the top. That'll hold it in nicely. Looking good. Stained up the rear floorboard, and I'll pull all these clamps off today. Pull those clamps off this floorboard. You see, I've got the little uh, little pieces on the bottom, which will engage. I'll run a bead of glue. We'll bolt that on. Might duck over and get some hardware and we'll get the torque tube in. Also, I've noted that the rudder bar's crooked. So, I might have to shim this. It's just going to get the better of me because that's going to feel funny um, in the cockpit. Like, that's more than four inches and that's less than four inches. So, I'll see how big a shim I need or whether I've bolted it up, maybe unbolt it, bolt it on again, just to see what's going on there. But it's definitely, you can see there, it's not square to the floor. Right, needed some bolts. These bolts will go through the floor um, into the aileron torque tube. It's up through the floorboard. So I need to drill a hole. I haven't got the right bolt, like a one pre-drilled. So we'll drill a hole through the head so I can lock wire it. Pretty important to lock wire that, I believe. Right, as I thought, where is it there? I, um, if you can see it, I broke the, broke the 1.5 mil drill off in the bolt. Sort of knew that was gonna happen, tried anyway. I'll order the right part, which will be just two of these bolts, just because it's the main, main artery, if you like, of the flight controls. So we'll get that done properly. All right, looking from the front, it's been playing with my my joystick here, I don't know if I've shown you that, but anyway. There's the joystick with the, it's got the button and everything on it. Wrapped in string. We're looking from through the firewall here. So, I just got some bushes. Luckily, I found some bushes, AN4 bushes. I put a penny washer on there, just for peace of mind, if it all turns to slop. It can't actually come off, it could get sloppy. Um, the problem I had was, if you just bolt the iron on, because it works as aileron as well. So until I get the ailerons on, I won't know if I've got enough travel. Because when you go to extremes, the elevator bell crank down the back there, cops a bit of a whack. So that's where we're at with that. Sort of happy with that at the moment, it looks a bit underward, but it works. Um, I think we'll run with that. Now I'm going to move on. Probably just shim this side to get the rudder bar. Because I think you'll feel that with your feet if you're right foot low. Although it will require a lot of right rudder. It'll feel like it's broken, so I'll fix that up. It's a better shot of the, um, the joystick. The fire button, yeah, looks looks good. Should do the job. Elevators, elevators working. Nice. Cables aren't necessarily tensioned. She's uh, going together slowly. Get those rudder pedals right, and we're nearly done. All right, guys. So we just got the. Controls all in, floorboards in. Leveled up the um, leveled up the pedals. Seven mil block under there. 
get the rudder pedals all nice and even. Torque tubes in, elevators working, did my standoff, floorboards are in. Now I think we'll, I've taken these side panels off, we'll start working with those. I'll show you where I'm up to. So just fluting these uh, to get a nice radius works out well. Alright guys, there you go, another video. Hope you enjoyed that one and we'll see you on the next one.